Here we go. Oh, we're streaming. We're live, which is very convenient because neither of you even Thank like you. sports. You don't like sports. Yeah, you I don't do. even wow. like sports. Yeah, I don't have all the build up in me this week. I'm Look, I did it though. I'm proud because I never do. It usually takes me a minute to be like, what's happening? Yeah. yeah. And it's weird because it's actually Jeff who doesn't like sports. You guys yeah. are scum. Yeah, Turn Jeff doesn't out. even like sports at all. Wow. Okay. 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 Jeff okay. killed a guy. I don't know. Watch true. him die or yeah, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that on the pod, but you can. It's fine. I'm it's the internet. All, you can I'm erase it. Hang out. Yeah, I might have been a little late in posting this. Did either of you post it and let people know we were doing this? No, I didn't even see the live stream link until I just signed in. Yeah, uh, I didn't post yeah, it. I put it. I put it in the notes that I sent on Monday. But, but yeah, you said, but you said notes last week too. Was, in the notes. Hmm? was the live stream link in the notes right away? Yeah, yeah, I, I put it in totally there. Missed it. I'm sorry, my bad. Kim, you keep saying, oh, but you sent notes last week and we didn't do the show. Is that because I booked a work thing and couldn't do it? No, I have no idea. I couldn't do it because I booked you a work thing. You, you couldn't and do it, Kim. I know. Well, I you guys have been replacing me when I can't I, do it. What does it matter that I sent notes last week? Well, when I can't do it, you don't send me notes. And then I text you guys and was like, how'd the show go? And you're like, we didn't do it. So I was like, oh, you said I like notes. how you added uh, uh, an inflection that we have yeah. not uh, inferred. Like it seems like you might be carrying something with you on that one, pal. Yeah, Me? I like that little stink in your voice. That yeah, was... we didn't bring we didn't bring stink to us not doing it. That's yeah. something that you just inferred. No, I brought stink today when I said I'm running a little late. Just to double check, we are doing the show, and you went, "I sent you the notes," or did you get the notes? I yeah, knew you were going to do that, so I don't think it's my own stink. I've also been up you since five a.m. stink. And went to bed at 1 a.m. last night and had to make a whole weird video about knitting. And I don't think it's going to get approved. And I have to redo it. And I'm... Well, you don't even like knitting. I hate knitting. I didn't know I hated it until this thing. Are you just hey. saying serenity now in your head, Adam? No, no. It's much worse than that. Hey, let's talk about tennis news. This was going to be on the show last week. But it's an ongoing story. That is still a very neat thing. I know we are all up in arms about women's basketball, and that is appropriate and correct. But at the same time, I would argue the coolest and kind of weirdest story in women's sports right now is an American tennis player named Danielle Collins. Ooh. She is 30 years old. She's been kind of average her entire career and she suffers from endometriosis so she's in extra pain all the time on top of all the pain that playing bone tennis pain body through. not pain in her bones but bonus pain right right extra. what's what's old for a tennis player like i don't know what the retirement i know football it's player like retirement 23, but 23 24 years old it's like any other sport where it depends on how well you take care of yourself Novak Djokovic is pushing pushing forty, and he's still the world the best. Pushing forty, yeah, you know pushing. what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, he's smile. You're happy. I yeah. desperately seek your approval. Flip that switch on. He, <laughs> yeah, Novak Djokovic. He takes incredible care of himself, so he's holding it together better than. What does he do? People. Drink urine. Plays tennis. Well, he does all that like weird Tom Brady type shit. Like he's one of those. Like he for a while was literally wearing like an Iron Man device on his chest when he played tennis. And no one knows exactly why. But honestly, that brought up more questions than it answered. Yeah, but yeah, okay. he, he does, <laughs> does things his own way. And there's nothing, with the results. He's there's like, nothing more confusing than a successful weirdo because then yeah. you're just like, I don't know if this is I'm mixing correlation with causation. He's wearing this silly shit. He's not eating red food. I don't think that's why he's doing so well. He just happens to be doing so well while he's being a fucking weirdo. Yeah. Yeah. So for tennis, I mean, 30 isn't old, but it's not young. Like you're, you're getting there. And you also have to be like, if you're still playing into your thirties, you probably have had a, at least some degree of success and you're still having some success. Daniel Collins up to this point had won two tournaments 
One of them was a 500 level. One was a 250. So those are like not even the tier under a major. They're like two and three tiers under. Oh, she's like off, playing, off Broadway. Yeah, kind of. And she's been playing a long time. And so this year at the start of the season, she announced she was retiring and people were like, yeah, that makes sense. I, I expect that <laughs> out of you. That sounds about right. The ripe and old age of 30. There's also another weird quirk where she's kind of an asshole. Oh. Like she's not the most well-liked player on the tour. Like people don't hate her, but she's just like, they call her a drama queen. Like she was throughout this run, which has been very impressive. We'll talk about it. She's been doing this thing where anytime an American crowd cheers for a foreign player that she's playing, she gets really upset. Like I'm the American. Why aren't you cheering for me? Which that's not how tennis works. People watching tennis just want a good match and they're going to kind of cheer for any cool shit they see, but they're still on her side. Anyway, Danielle Collins, she announces her retirement. People are like, that makes sense. You're not this good at not that good at this anyway. And then she just out of the blue just started winning like all the time. She went really deep into a couple tournaments to start the season, then went to the Miami Open. She lost her first set at the Miami Open and then didn't lose another set the entire rest of the tournament. She beat five different players who were ranked in the top 30 or higher. She was wow. ranked number 53 going in. Uh, she was ranked in the 70s at the start of the season. And she went into the Miami Open, ranked 53. She's the lowest ranked woman to ever win it. The only unseeded woman to ever win it. And she won it in like dominating fashion. So, and she's also from Florida. So she won the biggest. She tournament. has Florida face. Yeah, yeah, she looks like she's, she's got Florida. she's got MAGA face. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Where you look at her and you're like, oh no, like just a white, wanna... really tan blonde lady. That's her. I don't. Yeah, That's she's her. like a she's like a, a hot with sharp features, blonde, athletic woman. That's yeah, exactly she's... what I picture. Sharp features. That is a Trumper. That yeah, is a she Trump. Has, she, she looks has MAGA stern. Face. She looks very stern. And they're I mean, always she's blonde. Beautiful. She's beautiful and clearly has found some talent or some drive that is really pushing forward. She might be super progressive. Yeah. I don't know. Do you think wanna... that she was like, I'm going to retire and every, cause that doesn't feel good. Everyone's like, that's, that's, that sounds about right. That's probably. And then she let the fire of that fuel her I, to win. You know what I mean? Like, like fuck, fuck you, these right? people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've she been does. playing for 20 years. She does strike me as the type who would be like, Oh, you, don't care that I'm retiring, huh? All right. Gonna... Well, watch this. And it's like, we care more if you did that part before you retired. Yeah. You know? Why didn't you do this the whole time? It doesn't yeah, sound like anybody just... liked you before. So right. winning all the time, people would have cared a whole lot more. But what is indie, 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 I can't say that word. Indie, Indira Gandhi. The, the disease she has. In... Endometriosis. 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 Oh my God. I can't make my mouth say it. That's a bone um, disease. No, no, that's it's a, like, what is it? I don't know what that is. That's like a thing with it's the uterus. Oh, yeah, like someone a, told me I'm I should look in if I have that. There's that's a whole other apparently like very painful. Jeff had it before. Yeah, no, I had it a lot. My womb was that's, fucked up. Yeah, that's when you yeah. got your hysterectomy. Yeah, yeah. it's all the his energy. Hysterectomy. <laughs> yeah, you can't spell hysterectomy without his. Can. I don't think I've ever hated you both more than this moment. So, because we're men noted yeah. um i will yeah. say i just researched um cursory research but apparently she's like black lives matter like <laughs> she's, she's actually oh, Daniel a cool, she's quite a good person uh so oh sorry ma'am that sorry, we Daniel said you have trump face <laughs> sorry ma'am and also sorry for calling you ma'am even though you're a dozen years younger than me so much yeah almost half my age yeah. miss completely honest not half not sorry bro there's more though Daniel okay. Collins, because when we were going to talk about this last week, she had just won the Miami Open. Since then, the Charleston Open has happened. And she went into the Charleston Open and fucking won that too. They call that the Southern Charleston Slam. True. Oh. <laughs> There's what, what, what? 
there's three tournaments back to back Indian Wells, Miami Open, Charleston Open. If you win Indian Wells and Miami Open back to back, they call it the Sunshine Double. If you win uh, the Miami Open and the Charleston Open back to back, they call it the Southern Slam. And it's- she is the first to win a Southern Slam since Serena Williams. Are they just wow. coming up with combo names for every possible combination of tournament wins? Yes. No, it's You're like, oh, she uh, got the apple cart bonanza. But no, because it's a it's a <laughs> thing. It's a it's a really, really hard thing to pull off because these tournaments are back to back to back. Like one ends, the next one starts. So There's you're no. playing turn you're playing tennis nonstop every day for like a month. Yes, I it's am. like the tennis egots. Nope, not really. Like triple winning crown. all four yeah, majors three. is like the tennis egot. This is like just okay. triple crown, right? I don't this know why is, I'm bringing theater no, references it's in hard, here. It's just a really hard thing to do. It's just, it's not like, it's not like an officially recognized thing. It's just, it's a hard thing to do. So I like make note of it when it happens. I like the idea of a sun, su- sunshine. What's it called? The sunshine, sunshine double sunshine oh. double. That sounds like a monkey's song. I well, also, I'm in. I feel like if they're not going to recognize it, but they're like, Serena Williams is the last one. She should get a T-shirt you, or something, like a I mean, medal. No, it, How do you want them like, to recognize it? Yeah, I want her to have a trophy that has a sun, and it says the sunshine double. You, with a a southern, you don't want a southern trophy. You get a trophy for every tournament you win. So, but Then they should get a big one that has a sun. and it Serena says Williams sun. can make one herself if she wants. Like and maybe can, they do. I don't know. I just, I, but... But can Danielle Collins? She doesn't sound like she was doing real well until recently. So the Southern Slam is I mean, actually, I know Adam said that, but what the Southern Slam like is in reality, it's actually three eggs, bacon, pancakes, a small stack of pancakes, two more pancakes, and then several more pancakes. Yeah. I don't like pancakes, so. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it is a physically grueling thing to pull off. That's I why. I could do it. It's rarely ever done. Actually, no man has ever won a Southern Slam. Because I haven't tried, Adam. How's that for girl power? Also, the Charleston Open, women only. So a man cannot this, win a Southern Slam. This is, by the way, while well, you're my moral compass. You're just such an advocate for the ladies. Adam, not Jeff. Jeff says things like... I he's an advocate it. by saying a thing that happened? Yeah. No, he's an oh, advocate yeah. by saying you wouldn't be able to do it. Because well, I'm a man. Yes. Well, yeah, I had not a tennis player. I think I think you glossed over that I was setting up a little misdirection there. The Charleston Open is a women's only tournament, so no man can win. No, I understood it. I Adam, just chose to hear it how I wanted to hear it. Adam, I appreciate oh, okay. your allyship by explaining the rules of the Charleston Open. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Did but, you know that like a big percentage of American men believe they could beat Serena Williams in tennis? And I do think Jeff is one of them. I'd like to know if they mean, because it's actually that a uh, percentage of men believe they could score a point on Serena in tennis. And I'd like to know if that was a poll of like male tennis players. or just Oh, okay. I, I read men beat her in general. I, yeah, That's I don't know. Thing I read. If it's just tennis players, then yeah. Like, yeah, I remember it was a point because I remember there was like a very viral tweet about the, about a dude that's like doing the jokes. Like, I smile back. She does not return. She would look better if she did. She sets up to serve. A tennis ball immediately travels through my skull and ends my life. Yeah. Oh, that's a good tweet. But if it's male tennis players, then yeah, that's not unrealistic. She would score points on male tennis players. They would score points on her. That's how tennis works. Men and women play tennis together. In, oh, I thought it was just average non-tennis player males. I don't know. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm getting at is I don't know because it's insane. If they, like if someone just went out on the street and was asking dudes, hey, do you think you could beat Serena Williams at tennis? I need to know where you went when you were asking that. Were you at like a MAGA rally? I think there's, I mean, yeah, that's definitely the type of men that feel that, but I think there's also a a statistic where a lot of men believe they could like fight a bear too. Like these are questions that are asked. Okay. Against a bear. I'm not saying I'd win the bear, beat the bear, but I think depending on the bear, I would do okay. A bear would wreck anyone. And just so like, 
Jeff, agree to disagree. I People think Jeff really believes he might be able to not fully take the bear, but hold his own in a few rounds. Land a couple of shots. It's a bear. Yeah, it's a bear. It doesn't matter if you land shots. It's not who's scoring. Are you going to win by decision over the bear, you boxer fuck? <laughs> I'm going to get points. I'll get points on the bear. That was Black a great. Bears will take off. Look, if it's a grizzly bear. You're a grizzly no bear. I am. Thank you. Thank you, you so much. I really appreciate shit. that. You would not have a chance against a grizzly bear. Okay. Maybe you would not hold a chance against a grizzly bear. I mean, I, I'd probably survive and, quicker than you would because I think men are like bears and women are taught how to defend themselves from men the way they are taught how to you, defend themselves from a you bear. You know it. Yep. Get really loud, that. make noise. Yeah. I've I've never read a Stop, book. Stop, drop, so. and roll. You're right. You would do much better than I would. I wouldn't try to fight the bear is my point. <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't try. This went off the rails. Go on, Jeff. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Danielle Collins, she's doing great. She won two tournaments in a row. There's more tournaments coming up. I would. It would be cool if she wins a major. She never has. The Miami Open was her biggest win. Her first, uh, cool. her, Especially her to first hear opponent she's... in the next major, a bear. Yeah, yeah, she has to play a bear. Yeah. Just beat um, that dead horse. I. But now that we know that she's like progressive – uh, progressive, and you, I don't have to yes and everything you say. No, so uh, you should know about everything. I will. Uh, I like now that we know she's progressive and BLM and all that stuff. Uh, that's that's. I hope she. I don't, that, I don't know that that was ever seriously a question, but no. But I, Jeff Googled it, and it seems like she's on the right side of shit. So it'd be I cool mean, to see her win that, you know, before she retires. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it'd be cool to see her win, and. uh yeah, with winning all of these tournaments, she started the year ranked in the 70s, and now she, when the turn the rankings refresh, I believe she'll be number 17 in the world, 17 or 18. That's and that's actually wild. That's a huge deal because once you get into the top 20, then you don't have to qualify for major tournaments because tournaments have a qualifying round, and then there's other people who just get to play in it and don't have to play in those qualifying rounds. And that depends on where you're ranked in the world. So now Danielle Collins going forward won't have to play in these qualifying rounds when she goes to major tournaments. So she'll be even fresher going into or those. rustier. Will she, will she like, so you have to play, you have to play these qualifying rounds if you're under the top 20, if you're not in the top 20. Yep. Yes. Do you have to play in the round? Like you're like, they get to play, but they don't have to play. Do they have to play in the qualifying rounds, but it just doesn't matter? Or you mean can they like sit it out and be like, I'm already gonna be in this tournament, so I'm gonna like rehearse they don't at home? In, they don't play in them. They don't play oh, in them. Oh, okay. I that that's what I was confused about. Yeah, that's the whole point of the qualifying rounds is to make the tournament. But if you're already in the tournament, you don't have to play. Oh, I thought you said you don't okay. I thought you said they can. No, I misheard. I'm qualifying. Not yeah, qualifying no, is a lot of the heavy lifting there. I understand what that means. Yeah. I just thought I heard them differently. That They're like pre-qualified, like that loan that I just got. Very nice. Congrats. I got Are a letter, pre-approved, pre-qualified. So Ooh, let's you buy a house? Let's go uh park. just like another car for fun. Yeah. You're gonna buy a car for fun? Yeah, for fun. Like a race car? I think yeah. that seems like a good idea. Like a Subaru? Yeah. No, a race car. I don't know. I dated a race car guy, and he had a, a, like three Subarus. You're calling Jeff gay? Wow. I'm not a lesbian. I don't want to drive a Subaru. Are you? You, not, you, have, to, you have to know. You, you have to know that, that joke. That is. I don't. The last person I saw make that joke was Fortune Feimster. So I, it's, it's a pretty well-known joke. I don't remember what TV show it was, but. Someone said something about her driving a Subaru. And she goes, I drive a Subaru because I'm gay. <laughs> That's my, very well. My, my ex-wife refused to, but she was like, I need an all wheel drive car. And I was like, you should probably get a Subaru instead of an SUV. Cause you don't need an SUV. You drive too much. And she was like, I don't want people thinking I'm a lesbian. I'm like, we are married. <laughs> wow. So in Colorado, Subarus are super popular. Like they're just so like a car that a lot yeah, of people get. Are. Colorado's just full of gay people, I guess. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, it's it is. being an ally, Kim. It's an yeah. ally state. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Why are you so mad? Hey, 
Let's talk. <laughs> We're not mad. Yeah, that's uh, why you we've already Colorado. moved on. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> the women's NCAA tournament final. The most watched basketball game, men's or women's, since 2019. That is crazy. That's, that's so sick. cool, man. And I still don't know, are the ratings in for the men's tournament? Because if the women if the women's final got more viewers than the men's final, that will be the first time in history. That oh, I guess we could, let's, I'll Google it. More but, like first time in history. <laughs> that's um, the best I can do. <laughs> also shout out to UConn for doing it for, in the men's side, at least. God damn it. Yeah. The men's tournament. Oh, it was boring. Like there were no, I've been saying the, this whole tournament, there's no stars. There's no fucking storylines. It's just, is UConn going to win again? And yeah, U UConn's going to win again. It felt like pretty much a foregone conclusion. There was that one game, uh, the final four game against Alabama. Okay, I just found it. You ready for this? Little... The final game between South Carolina's South Carolina and the University of Iowa's Hawkeyes averaged about 18.7 million. You said that and peaked at a whopping 24 million combined on ESPN and ABC, making it the first time in history that a women's final has drawn a larger TV audience than the men's, according to ESPN. There it is. How there rad is that? Yeah, like that and I mean, men. they delivered. I don't know how much any of us actually watched the tournament, but I watched a whole bunch of it. And I had on a lot. Yeah. I watched the final game, and I watched and highlights. Those games were fucking great. There were a lot of really, really great games. Remember when UConn lost the game on a questionable offensive foul call? That, I didn't put that in the notes because I don't want to get angry. That was not a questionable call. Here's the thing. They called that same thing a few different times throughout the game. If UConn scored on that play and won, the talking point would be, why didn't you call that foul? She elbowed Gabby Marshall in the fucking ribs. Watch it Jeez. in slow motion. There are there are Instagram videos that replay it like the fucking Zapruder film. She <laughs> elbowed Gabby Marshall in the ribs. Like it wasn't a minor foul. And I hate that people are trying to take away from Iowa's win as if UConn, who's supposed to have had the best player in the nation, didn't have several other opportunities to score more points than Iowa scored. Like, that's not why Iowa won. That's insane. But that's why I didn't put it in the notes. I feel, and everyone's talking about it. It's like, are they talking about it because they don't think that she elbowed it? Like, I'm confused. They don't think it was a foul you call in that situation. But, but she elbowed you, her in the. Oh, yeah. She fucking elbowed her in the ribs. It was a moving screen. It was absolutely an illegal screen. And, but the whole thing is people are like, don't call it in that moment. But if you've called it earlier, like we either want the refs to pick and choose when they call fouls or we want them to like be consistent. But what we want in that regard seems to change. Like depending on the situation, we either want them to be consistent or we want them to use some discretion and not call fouls in certain moments. And then that really lies into whether or not I would have won the bracket. Oh, yeah, I suppose. Oh. But I mean, even it's, then, it, it's, it's not interesting a though because score on that play. I think Gabby your Marshall statement can be hell of a defender. Right. That no. statement can be relevant for like every sport, right? Yeah, well, I mean, there's there's a sl the refs I mean, you, and the you, consistency, the unwritten, the, unre the unwritten concept of the the sliding scale that there are, that there are certain situations where the scale is less <clears throat> aggressively called. Um, than it is in other scenarios at certain points in time. There's the let them play aspect of it, which usually is more focused on major league sports, like yeah. professional sports. But also like, just a couple weeks ago, we talked about Iowa getting a bunch of foul calls and a lot of people, I think you included, were like, sometimes the stars get the calls. Well, and sometimes the stars get the calls. Sometimes stars yeah. get calls. I think every sport should have the hockey rule. Violence goes until fight. someone is on the ground. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, I understand it's because the the hot the the ice skate, but I feel like once you're on the ground, everyone should stop. But I think they should just be able to fight. Let them fight. Well, the on the ground aspect isn't <laughs> necessarily kidding. because of the skate. Oh, I but, thought the skate was just like the ice. All of it. It was no. The it, skate it, could slit it, your throat. No, nah, it's always more just been like, okay, it's over. Separate. You did what you needed to do. Yeah. Um, you know the the skate is nobody's like they're not kicking them while they're down. <laughs> that would be no, awesome. I'm picturing That's, them just slicing sick. that throat open. Well, it's yeah, happened. Also, to, it happened to uh, that goalie that one time where you're just watching oh. a guy die. Uh, he didn't die, but like you see him like dying, like holding his throat while fucking blood's pouring out of his neck. A guy and in England like, died last year in a hockey match that exact same way. There's oh my god, the guy who the the guy he was playing got charged with a, either manslaughter or murder, and it's because I think I watched a video of it, but it stops right before his neck gets it's brutal like yeah you don't want to see it no you don't want to see that but what you do see is the guy whose skate cut his throat he goes airborne but then it looks like he tries to kick the guy like his leg kicks out and i can't tell if it's a reaction from being airborne or if he was just like kicking in anger and oops i just slit this guy's throat but like he sean michaels in this guy yeah, he clearly kicks his leg before the video ends. So, Jesus. Yeah, That's also my childhood cool. fear, Shannon Shannon. Yeah, what? Uh, uh, in the, in the comments of getting your throat cut off. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I think just accidentally like, murdering someone. Yeah, you're going like 25 miles an hour with knives on your feet. Shit can happen. Yeah, that's true. So I think they should just let them fight until they get on the ground. And then it's like, what, all right, yeah, fight's this, over. Historically speaking, when they removed fighting from hockey in certain places, the injuries were increased almost exponentially because without the self-regulation of the players themselves, they were doing whatever they wanted, knowing they would just get a penalty. That right. There was no impunity to it. So enforcers are surprisingly like very important to hockey. It's weird. If I can add a caveat to that, Hell yeah. yeah, motherfuckers are wearing helmets. Motherfuckers are wearing helmets. Yeah, punch people in the head all you want when you're wearing helmets. Basketball players aren't wearing helmets. Give them helmets. Yeah, exact reason Caitlin <laughs> Clark can't play in the NBA. Someone tweeted that, and I, there was a quote tweet I saw on Instagram, and the person tweeted was like, give me one reason why Caitlin Clark can't play in the NBA. And the quote tweet just said Draymond Green. Yep, accurate. Fair. Yep. Actor. I don't know what that means. That Raymond means Green is an insanely unhinged basketball player who gets suspended. The last suspension was what? Three minutes into the game? Yeah. Yeah. Can I and it was a crucial game that they Steph needed Curry, to win. Steph Curry cried about it. Steph Curry started crying on the court. It was wow. such a genuine moment. It's it. a very rare moment to have a basketball player that is so unhinged that you're like, this man is poisonous. I love Steph Curry. I think Steph Curry is borderline the perfect athlete. Is he I, your moral compass? No, like I don't have a moral compass. Like, Steph Curry is just, <laughs> I don't know. He fucking gets it. Like he seems like a good teammate. Yeah. He always says the right shit. He is deadly at his job like he's arguably the best shooter in nba history there's nothing oh, not he, like i think he him. represents the modern nba the best of any player as well like the like yeah. where the nba is right now steph curry is the guy that represents that style of play the like the best way you could possibly imagine yeah yeah steph curry, also, he should have a statue Outside. He also grew up rich playing basketball, which probably saves him a lot of the, you know, there are certain people that came up in lower socioeconomic status that didn't have a lot of the advantages and they might not act the same way too. That's a, that's a real thing people talk about. Yeah. Okay. How, like, I know, is he the only rich athlete ever? Have you seen where Caitlin Clark practices in the off season? <laughs> it looks like a either. basketball facility her parents built onto the back of their house, which is a great investment 
but not one you can make if you're poor. So I don't know if we're going to give Steph Curry that shit. We got to give it to Caitlin. Clark. Oh yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not saying anything against that. I, 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 go ahead. I just have a question about Caitlin Clark. So go ahead with your Steph Curry thing. Well, one more thing I will add in regards to growing up rich in athletics, like explain Jessica Pagula. She's like the number five American female tennis player. And her parents are billionaires. They own the Buffalo Bills yeah. and the Buffalo Sabres. And she's good, but it's not enough to like, she's definitely not the fucking Steph Curry of women's tennis. Oh, I wasn't talking about like skill. I was talking about like behavior on the court and stuff like that. Like, oh, that's what people I'd be talk interested about to look in that. So he took like finishing school. That's kind of like the vibe that has been instilled is like if Draymond Green's father played in the nba or or whatever that like maybe his behavior would be different because he wouldn't have had to fight and struggle or what you know it's like it's it's mm, that happens in fighting a lot too when people come up they're like i came up from the fucking dregs and you're like yeah the way you talk i can see it but then it becomes a very unfortunate part where people start to get racist about that yeah i was just gonna say it yeah i was gonna say there's a fine yeah that by the way like i didn't that. say that there were color aspects to that i just said socioeconomic like well me and kim said it for you yeah that's fair i knew you said, what you were going for yeah, kim's from colorado i get it yeah yeah you're from boston yeah yeah <laughs> yeah we let uh got you there, we, we let gay marriage happen we're... first kim okay <laughs> starts with anything K. else really yeah what what else that has nothing to do with race look so man go on. <laughs> we're big civil rights people it's just most of our people like they're fine with people of color as long as they don't marry their daughters that tends to be the general <laughs> as long as vibe. everyone's cool with you saying the n-word casually in boston we love the people but you gotta we never okay use with... the hard r for accent purposes i guess yeah yeah i said it's we hard. like i'm a part of the team you know? sounds like you so I, I, mean, got traded. Sounds... I got i got traded to the west coast I got traded I mean, to the libs I got yeah. All right, let's talk I, about some more Caitlin Clark stuff. Okay. What was your question about Caitlin Clark? So, I she's good. I know that. She's brought them to the championships two years in a row. She put them kind of on the map. But what's the draw? Like is it just cuz she's kind of unhinged? She's a little rude. I I don't understand. She's good, but like she is so are a lot of the other girls. Kim, she is the all-time leading scorer in NCAA basketball history men's or women's oh okay that's what he i want to know i google it a lot it doesn't say that they don't talk about her points it has to say that like that is the whole thing she is aside from winning a championship no one has accomplished the shit caitlin clark has accomplished yeah. and that's why this thing where people are like i don't know if she's the goat because she didn't win a championship well all those women who won championships didn't accomplish what she did also, so, th there was a, a point made very strongly about the goat conversation, which is this is a 22 year old. Yeah, yeah. let her. Where people are like, maybe we save the goat conversations until she can rent a car. <laughs> well, and not just that, she might be the women's college basketball goat. Like that is cemented in stone. But like Pete Maravich was the best men's NCAA player. And he was fine in the NBA. Yeah. It translated pretty medium. Yeah. He wasn't amazing. He was fine. And also he was great in the, in the seventies, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was a lot of crisp chest passes in the seventies. Yeah. But man, if you ever watch highlights of Pete Maravich play, it is, it is breathtaking. And it's all, it's the passes. It's the fucking passes. It's like watching John Stockton. Yeah. When you're like, well, who's this dad? That's the thing I think Paige Beckers does not have over Caitlin Clark. She doesn't have Caitlin Clark's court vision. She does not see the court the way Caitlin Clark does. She does not make, I'm, like she is, she racks up a lot of assists too, but they don't look the way Caitlin Clark's look. And it could be because she hasn't played for two years because she tore her ACL or whatever. Hey, let's talk about another Caitlin Clark story though. Caitlin yeah. Clark versus Raven Johnson. This isn't, this is getting some attention, but this feels like the story of the women's final to me. 
there was a moment in last year's final four, not the championship game. Uh, mm-hmm. Iowa beat South Carolina in the final four last year. And there's a moment in that game where Caitlin Clark is guarding Raven Johnson and Raven Johnson is at the three point line. And Caitlin Clark just for one, like walks away and stops guarding her and also like waves her off. Like I'm not, you're not going to fucking, you're not worth my defense. A yeah. Three pointer. Like you're that shitty of a shooter. Jesus. And I watched that video. That's a savage move, man. Yeah. That's so good. That's Rough. mental. That's mental defense in a way that you can't fathom. And it almost wrecked Raven Johnson. Like she thought about quitting basketball. We'll link to an article. She talks about watching that game like a hundred times. And her like she had to be talked out of quitting by Dawn Staley. And instead of quitting, and here's the thing, if that moment ever gets famous enough, eventually there will be a like, here's what you don't know type podcast episode about it. Because Raven Johnson in that game, she was three for six from the three point line. So she hit half of her three pointers and played slightly above average. (laughs) Yeah, she played fine in the game. It's just that Caitlin Clark did that thing. And it like, that's all people remember. So oh, that is, savage. that is admirable savage. That's like, that's yeah. like when someone is screaming at you and telling you how much they hate you. And you just calmly go, I don't think about you at all and walk away. Like, it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, I love it. And now so, I, now I get it. Now I get it. And in the run up to this game, people were asking South Carolina, like, is this a revenge game? And that's a thing like teams like to be diplomatic or act like they don't think about it that way. So you always get like, you know, we're just treating it like another game. South Carolina was like, fuck yeah, this is absolutely revenge. And especially with Raven Johnson. And if you watch the game first quarter, Caitlin Clark came out fucking snapping 18 points in the first quarter. Starting in the second quarter, Don Staley had Raven Johnson start guarding Caitlin Clark, and Raven Johnson shut her down. She had oh yeah four points in the second quarter, and I believe eight points in the second half. She finished with thirty points. So, and Raven Johnson, I think, scored four points, but her performance in this game is what people are going to remember because she's the one who came in and just fucking shut Caitlin Clark down. It's crazy. It was her. And then they had this rookie or not rookie freshman coming off the bench who was just fucking raining three pointers. So it wasn't even South Carolina stars that beat Iowa. It was the girl Caitlin Clark year old. Yeah. Shoot off. And some girl who's fresh out of high school. Nuts. It's but we were watching that game. It was like the whole I was at B dubs and the whole bar was rooting for Iowa and Caitlin Clark. And my friend and I were like, South Carolina is just too good. Like they're just really good. They're, they're big so broads good. and yeah. they're so good. Big and like Yankees energy they, thinking that the that Iowa was a better team than SC. I think it was just like yeah, everyone thought SC was going to win. So and Caitlin Clark and they're like, oh, we want, I, I don't know. People are rooting for that broad, but I like I think, the hype train. She's the most famous basketball player and like, I think, in that whole thing. Yeah, I think to some extent it felt like destiny a little bit like, all right, this obviously is going to end with Caitlin Clark winning a championship. And I kind of always felt like it wasn't. And it's because I got on the Caitlin Clark hype train and I've been watching Iowa and when the people around Caitlin Clark turn it on, Iowa is unbeatable. If that doesn't happen, watch out. Iowa could very much be beat. In South Carolina, I, I love how fueled they were by winning or by not winning a championship last year because you would think they've never won one. This is Don Staley's third championship in like four years. 
but she's still just because they didn't win last year. They were like, fuck, yes, this is revenge. Are you crazy? Of course it's revenge. And also, I forgot to mention, Raven Johnson got a viral moment of her own because there was that play where she was guarding Caitlin Clark and just stripped the ball and went for a layup. How crazy would it have been if she just dunked? Just fucking just yeah. tomahawk jammed it right down. <laughs> Or went back a few steps and did a three-pointer because no one believes she can do a three-pointer. I don't yeah. think that that works. <laughs> and then airballed it. Like, oh. <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> the stands. Yeah. Or if she turned into a wolf. Oh, yeah. If she and turned Jeff, into a wolf, that would have been fucking dominant. And then Jeff would have thought he could fight her and win. I'd fight Teen Wolf. Man, talk about a movie that didn't age particularly well. Teen Wolf. I, I watched it again Wolf. not too long ago. And the, the one scene that stands out is Michael J. Fox is talking to his friend and he's like, hey, man, I got to tell you something. And the friend turns around and Michael J. Fox is a wolf. And the guy was like, oh, my God, I thought you were going to tell me you were gay. It's like, yeah, oh, damn. That's crazy. Jesus Christ. The so 80s. much scarier than a werewolf. I also... <laughs> Recall that he didn't say you were gay either. I think the word oh, yeah. is very different. Yeah, Jesus. I, I sugarcoated that a little bit. It, I mean, like, look, we can clutch our pearls at the 80s all we want. It was fine then for them to say it. It's not okay. It wasn't okay, but they yeah. believed it was. Fuck, man. <laughs> hey, Major just... League. I'm just counting down the days until Major League is done. <laughs> I can love that movie, but what a racist logo that fucking thing had. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't think I can picture that logo. It's yeah. Chief Wahoo it. from the Indians. Yikes. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah. Yikes. Hey, we were just talking about Dawn Can Staley. We, oh. we love Dawn Staley. She continues to be the best. First, I linked in the notes to an Instagram video where... In a press conference before either the Final Four or the championship, a reporter asked Dawn Staley what was obviously on everyone's mind in the moments before the biggest women's basketball game of all time when they asked, are you okay with transgender women participating in women's college sports? And first Dawn Staley was like, yeah, that's, that's the fucking question you want to ask yeah. me right now? It's like, all right. And here is her quote. Uh, oh, God damn it. I didn't put the quote in there. Can I play I, it? Will people hear it if I play it? Try. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know if you, I can hear it. Everybody shut the fuck up. Okay. It's not playing. No, we nailed it. You didn't hear that, Kim? Yes, I heard it right after I got my podcast license. Hey. I don't know if people actually heard that. No, no. we did not. We did not hear it. But or at least we didn't. I don't know if the people listening did. People listening people in the listening chat. Did, did you either, hear it? But the people who listen to the podcast version will hear it. Don Staley said yes. She said, of course, I'd be fine with it. Like, obviously. Nope, they didn't hear it in the chat. It, yeah, she also said some of those things. She's like, and now this is the kind of, these are the comments I'm going to get. She's like, you've decided that this is going to be what my next 24 hours worth of comments on my Instagram are going to be. And that's fine. Yeah. Because she said she was fine with trans women playing yeah. basketball with her. Yeah. Yeah. You think people aren't going to comment on that? In Bigot's going to big it. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Bigot's going to big it. I want to say that next time someone says something. Okay. You have to pay me to do that, though. Jeff invented that. Yeah. It's copywritten. Yeah. I'm not yeah. doing that. Well, then you're not fucking saying it, Kim. What are you going to do? I'm going to sue your ass to the fucking Stone Age, bro. Also, did everyone see Don Staley's 
speech after South Carolina won, she, whereas I feel like, let's say Gino Ariema, for example, who got in a press conference and was like, women must fight. I have the best player in the nation, not Iowa. I feel like he, if UConn beat Iowa in that situation, would have gotten in that fucking speech after and been like, I told people we had the best player in the nation. Meanwhile, Dawn Staley, after taking the trophy for South Carolina, thanked Caitlin Clark for everything she's done for women's basketball in college and for what she expects she'll do for the WNBA. Who does that? Dude, women are the best. Don Staley is the best. Don Staley is the best. Like, she needs to be in the fucking person hall of fame. Is that a thing? Yeah. I don't know if she's I picture a- I picture you in there as well. Who? Me? No. Yeah. <laughs> I hope Adam? I don't know. Mm. Adam's my moral compass. You need oh, to re- you need to recalibrate that compass. Yeah. Okay. I talk about it a lot. That is that's wonderful. I that almost made me tear up. Yeah, Dawn Staley's great. But and then hey, I love that she was like, "Yeah, I do think trans women should play sports. This is really how we're going to spend our time." Like, I love that. Like, really. So now it's time to talk about bracket results. Oh. Hard pass. I hope that everyone who participated is listening to this at some point. Because I I guess I'll post about it in the Discord, but I need you to send me your addresses because we have stuff to send out. Might come in separate packages because Jeff and Kim are going to have to mail stuff either Adam, way. Adam. We, we see each other Friday. We, we're all on the same show on Friday. Oh, that's right. Yeah. This Good. is why Jeff did it because he wants okay. us all to hug. And Cool. Mm. So I'll bring my stuff and one of you mail it out. If you, want, if you want me to mail it out, I'll mail it out. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, I I do the podcast, like yeah. all all the notes and all the yeah, editing. I'll do it. It's fine. Stuff. Okay, so good. Because I'll to... I'll mail it out, but it will be four and a half months from now because I will forget about yeah, it. Just, I'm gonna mail it. I'm just gonna mail it. No, like, right. I'll mail it. I have packed. It's... Why? Wait. Why did you say it like that? I just said I'll mail it out. I have no problem with it. It's fine. It's fine. You a fucking bitch. And I was just telling you my strengths and my weaknesses, and one of them is not mailing things. I even have branded merch, baby. I know. Am I going to get one of those May hats? You promised me one when I gave you a book, by the way. I was joking when I said I wanted one. I wasn't. I think I looked And also, when I sent you the screenshot of the score of the UConn, uh, what was the, who did they play in the final that they fucking stomped? Purdue? And the score was was 9 to 11, and I screenshotted it and said, make a wish. Guess what? My wish was that neither of you fucking replied, and it came true. So I just didn't understand why 911 was make a wish. It's not an angel number. It's kind of, it's a, I mean, I know what 911 is. Everyone makes a wish when it's nine. Well, you see it, the, the clock. Yeah, we do that all the time. I because of 911 wish that 911 never happens again because I'm a patriot. Yeah, the joke is that 911, you make the wish. Yes, Kim, it's that's the joke. Okay, I'm so, sorry. I thought you made a wish when it was one 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 or like this angel. Is like morning numbers. radio, man. This it sure is. We need a we need a rooster sound effect. <laughs> is okay. that because you're making fun of me right now? Yeah, I look but we very love you pretty. So much. I love <laughs> you. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the you don't even like sports radio show. <laughs> Did you just cockadoodle do? Mm-hmm. That's right, cockadoodle do. The sun is up and the day has started. Everybody, oh, oh, we got the wolf man up in here. Kim in the box, go be the hole. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, what was? Yes. Wolf Ooh. man Kim is in effect. Do I do I howl? Oh, no. Whoa. Whoa, it's the Wolf <laughs> Woman. You know we what should... that means, everybody? It's time to win tickets. We got sticks coming up to the fairgrounds. So we got to call in. We got caller number 69. <laughs> <Is that laughs> what tickets? Go see Sticks and Lover Boy. Fatal crash on the 10. Leave for work about 20 minutes early. It's eight, across, it's eight minutes past the hour. 
Uh, let's go through the winners, shall I'd we? I'd like to yes and this, but I don't know what to say because I I'm I'm shy. I yes and it. I howled. I never. We we're very happy about. Will you, that, will you yes and us going through the winners? Yeah, I guess. Okay, yes. thanks. Um, I mean, I guess I don't count, but I came in fourth. That's fine. What number oh, yeah, did we, I come in? We should talk about that first among the three of us. Oh, the real, wow. the real contest. I, I mean. I, I came in first. Kim came, fucked me in came in brackets. second. I came in second? Jeff yeah, came in third. Which Kim embodies everything that a second chance bracket is about. Because let me just let me just scroll back to Oh no, I did not do well in the first one oh, round. You All beat right. me in the first bracket. Oh, did I? Yeah. Are man. you sure? I'm pretty sure I lost it, or maybe I didn't. Maybe that's not the case. My Maybe's app really only hard. connected to the first bracket, so I could only check the second bracket on my computer. So I got confused and just decided to wait for this moment so you could just tell me. Jeff, in the first bracket, I had 1,510. I still won, of course. Kim and Adam are bad people. That's you, 1,480. Uh, Kim is the best person. 260. Kim had an anti-bracket in the first <laughs> It's like it's like if I the, took the yeah, ACT, yeah. yeah, I didn't write and forgot to even write and just like wrote my name because don't you get yeah. points for just writing your name? That's did really. Did we have like, the same joke? Did you pick all upsets? What the I don't. Hell? I don't know. I just eighty. I just picked cities I liked and cities I'd heard of. <laughs> That'll do it. That'll. And do then it. the second bracket, I cracked the internet and did a little bit more research. Yeah, the second bracket a little more competitive, but. But I was always promised, like at the beginning of doing this, a lot of people were like, oh, well, since you've never done it, beginner's luck, you'll be like, I'm just picking because I like the colors and then you'll win. And that's sort of what I did. And I, did they lied. Do. They lied about they beginner's luck. They lied to you. All right. All those picks you thought would never lose. They lied to you. But they do. But they do, do, do. <laughs> Return of the Mac. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, and once again, also, I just don't know a lot of references. I'm just going to read the, your screen names in the bracket, like not your real name, but I don't know how, how do people, how do people get me their, their deets? They can DM? message you. They can message DM me you on the, on the, on Discord. the socials or on do you the have Discord? an email address that you give out to the humans? <sighs> Do I want to do that? I don't know. I don't know if I want to give a whole email address out. I don't have any that don't go places that I don't want the public to have it. Um, uh, yeah, I don't Fuck it. Info at oh, You know what? They can oh. They can also send it to me. Yeah, because you're the one who's going to mail it. I'm mailing it out. Like, just fucking send it to me. Fucking send it to Jeff. Here you send are... it on whatever social media or whatever your name, however you do that. You know what? Message it to me on my Patreon, which I'm sure you're a part of. So you could just send me that on my Patreon and then I will get all your stuff ready and mail it out. What if they're yeah. not a part of your Patreon? That's yeah. The, yeah. God damn it. Oh. Uh, Oliver Allen said we need more Buffy references in the show because then I would be able to yes and more because those are the references I know. Thank you, Oliver. Yeah. You get me. Well, you I, do stab our references directly in the heart. So yeah, there's that. I didn't Suck watch any movies right in the out. 80s and 90s. So, Okay. I'm going to try once again to read the names of these winners. Here we go. A. Harwan wins it all. That means Ooh. you get, I'm remembering this off the top of my head, a lifetime subscription to the You Don't Even Like Podcasts Network. Oh. A SGC 10 graded Caitlin Clark Bowman U now card. That's a fucking that's a treat. That's a treat. Did you I say that's that. the Bowman U, like the first Bowman, right? No, no, no. That would be come on, Jeff. Bowman U now, like the, the tops now. Oh, okay. Once. Shit, come on. What well, that's why I was like, oh, that's a good one. Yeah. I mean, they're both it's still a good fucking thing. Um and then from Kim, what are you sending people? A book. Why do uh, you? Uh, 
Because <laughs> I forgot what I said I would send. A book? Does anybody want the bikini yes, photo? Here's the thing. The, the first three people both get hats. Both all get hats and books from Kim and also like assorted stickers and other bullshit. Uh, everyone gets graded. The, the first four people get graded cards. The champion gets the Caitlin Clark card. Uh, the second place gets an SGC 10 Juju Watkins Goodwin champions rookie card. Third place gets an SGC 9.5. No, no, I think an Angel Reese PSA 9 card. And then there's an Ashlyn Watkins card. So people will be getting graded sports cards for me. And then hats and books and stickers and things from Kim. And then the person in fifth place just gets stickers and shit. But you do they get a bikini photo? I think, did I promise that? Kim, you can do that if you want. Yeah. That's one of my pay. I mean, we talked about that in the chat, right? It's you and I. Yeah, that's fine. You could, we can put as much as we want. We can put oh, keys in the packages and do fucking whatever. I'm so in. you'll be getting stuff in the mail. Send Jeff yep. your congratulations. Send congratulations. Jeff your, send Jeff your place. Send me your placement as well as your um, send me, you know, your placement as well as like your mailing address. Adam, they want a picture of you in a bikini. Joe said that. I oh. Let's do a swimsuit photo shoot between the three of us. Let's all not bikinis. do that at all. Yeah. Why would I fucking do that? I don't know. Not I'm not these people's dancing goddamn monkey. I'm doing what I need to do right now. Podcast. Um, <laughs> I love you. What are we talking about? I love Sam. you too. Well, I'll tell you what talking? we're talking about. We're talking about the worst form of basketball. We're talking about men. The NBA. No, I think men's college basketball is the worst. The NBA is still watchable, but it's also in a bad spot. But it is time to start watching. Any the teams NBA. clinch any spots lately? The, the season has officially started now that there's five days left and playoffs are about to start. Uh, yes, the Boston Celtics oh, okay. have locked down the number one overall seed, which means they will have home court advantage when they get beat in the finals. Oh, nice. <laughs> How'd Broncos basketball do? I mean, they're still, a lot of the seeds in the West are still up in the air because the West is competitive. And okay. so those teams are still like jockeying for position, but the nuggets are, I think second in the West right now. And the Timberwolves are first mm -hmm. and the Timberwolves are getting Carl Anthony towns back soon. Maybe. So there'll be, there'll be a team to look out for, but yeah, if you were ever going to watch regular season NBA this season, this is the week to do it. And also it started on Tuesday. So you're a day behind. Just turn Just this off and go watch basketball. Yeah. But it's not the playoffs. So now people care because there's so much basketball. Yeah. The playoffs start this month or next month. Playoffs. Playoffs. There's just so much basketball. I can't care until it gets to that. Yeah. If it's not buffs get ball, then you'd care. If it was the Broncos or what? Buffs get ball. Hilar hilarious. I get the <laughs> reference. I understand. Oh, it's Buffy. It's a Buffy it's reference. I mean, but it's, it, it, are you leaving? Is that where you're it's just going to go? Thanks, Jeff. It's been, it's been good. And then we never saw him again. Yeah, I understand. I get it. I and get then it. Adam and I film a buddy cop movie. We go rogue. I would never be a cop in a movie. That's why we go rogue. What do I look like? Ice tea? All right. Let's yes. talk about a thing mm -hmm. I added at the last minute, even though it happened a while ago. I just forgot. Oh. Here's the thing. I'm starting to think Shohei Otani might actually be kind of a fuck face. There's like, there's the whole betting thing. He won't tell us the name of his dog. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> but this thing happened. He hit his first home run as a Dodger at Dodger Stadium, a young woman, 27 years old, caught the ball. She was there with her fiance. And one, Dodger security descended on her like she just held up a sign that said, I want to kill the president. Like they fucking surrounded her 
separated her from her fiance, which sure feels, did. feels like a bit of a crime, got her in a room and were like, give us the ball. We're not going to authenticate it if you keep it. So it'll be worthless to you. We'll give you a signed hat and we'll escort you to your car. But also, no, we won't. They didn't escort her to her car. They sure didn't. They had to fucking escape in disguise. Yeah. Why? And then she... The Dodgers organization fucking sucks. Yeah, the Dodgers are fucking trash. They are trash. And the thing is, she later found out that that ball, probably worth around $100,000. They said the estimates are 50 to 100 grand. Yeah, Yeah. like a life-saving, a life-changing amount of money for this young woman. For this young Dodgers fan who the organization and Otani both could very easily be like, here's a hundred thousand dollars. So easy. They could both afford it. Instead, Otani like put out implications to the media that he made it right by taking pictures with. The girl. So, so there's one thing that about that specific part that a lot of people are, are saying like, before we jump to any conclusions about that, he said something, something met with the girl and people assumed he said that he did, but nowhere in like the people that speak Japanese that heard that they're like, he never said he met with that girl. Oh yeah. But people are interpreting the fact that he said that somebody met with the girl, like it's that's up in the air. So we shouldn't immediately jump to the conclusion that a man who doesn't speak English was being deceptive about Here's it. Here's the thing, Jeff. It's still not a great response. No, it's, well, it's not cool. It's really the not actual, cool what the Dodgers the did. The only yeah. good response on anyone's part would have been like, you're right. Here's $50,000. That's so easy. That's so easy. Yep. And like, not in other baseball places, diamonds, stadiums, you, uh, thank you, you catch a ball, you, they authenticate it, you get to keep it, you go home, you do what you will with it. And if you're like yeah, that Cubs guy, like that. 20 years ago, people hate you for the rest of time, but well, you still get to, ball. oh, he, what did he do? I can't remember. He, he, had... he reached for a ball that everybody else reached for. And then oh. one player got angry at him. And then the cameras lingered on him the entire time because, and the people talked about him on TV. Oh. Fucking yeah. mess. Um, but like, yeah. that's not normal What they, what's the reasoning behind they did that? What, why? It's extortion. They wanted the ball. It's like an important ball in Dodgers history, according to them. Um, But the reality is that they essentially, it's kind of like blackmail. They were like, give us this ball or we refuse to authenticate it, which might be a huge ethical violation. Well, not just that. Like, like I'm not... I'm not making any statements about Dodger security. I don't know these people, but this, I I don't know if this is a stretch, but this feels like some Trump's America shit because this was a couple English is their second language. They didn't like, they separated them. The girl didn't know what kind of situation they were in. They clearly didn't respect these people. And I like, I, I don't, I can't guarantee that's what it is, but, it does sort of feel like they were like, look, we're the fucking authorities. Give us our goddamn ball. And it's like, man, fuck the Dodgers. Yeah. The reality is like, I I, it, I don't even necessarily want to equate that to like a Trump's America aspect as much as just like the Thank fucking you. big guy crushing down the little guy anywhere. Just and like, the again, for America. The Dod- like but remember, that, you is, are- that, is that a super liberal? Well, no, but like ability or does that feel like. A Trump's America sensibility. I, I, I think that liberal. I think liberals do it too. As soon as they're granted an opportunity to have that power, like, I look. Yeah. Dodger Stadium itself is built on the graves of an like a. Oh, is it? I didn't know yeah. that. No, I know, but it's like the Dodgers are haunted by their mistreatment of their fans. That is a thing that they have done for quite some time. Like, and this is a continuation of that treatment of fans from that exact same community. Damn right it is. Fuck the Dodgers. Fuck them. Jesus. Fuck the Dodgers. Fuck was, the Dodgers. I'm like, so glad I got I to see that... them lose the World Series in 2018. I'm so glad I got to be there and watch those Dodger fans just cry their little cheers because they didn't win the game. 
I Here's hate Dodger thing. fans. If I was in that situation, I wouldn't. I would have just fucking walked with the ball. Because like, I don't have any legal right to well, hold you. Like, well, if you're not going to fucking authenticate it, I'm not going to give it to you. And none of us will ever have it. Like, I'll go fucking play catch with this motherfucking yeah. ball. I'll take a fucking selfie with that ball in this fucking room. And I'll be like, here's the fucking ball. I will set this ball on fire is what I will do Tom on McFarland the internet. Todd McFarlane bought all those McGuire and Sosa balls. Were those like authentication for home run balls is a relatively new thing, isn't it? Probably. Yeah. Some yeah. memorabilia. I'll get some ball. fucking money out of this fucking ball. Yeah. That's yeah. They didn't sport them out there. You know, Dodgers fans, the least Robbie fans that have ever existed. They're trash. Yeah. The fans that whipped a beer at us as we were walking out. The yeah. amount of violence that occurs in Dodgers parking lots is insane. A I guy took Dodgers. a guy took me to a Dodger Rockies game years ago, and we were sitting in like the family cheap sheet seats. I found out later, and they were and I wore a Rocky shirt, and they threw food and beer, and I don't think they could drink in that section because it's the family one. They threw like food and shit at us, and then they made me put my sweatshirt on because it was causing issues. And yeah. the Rockies weren't good. So the guy. The guy who threw the beer at me throughout the entirety of that game was on his phone shopping for shoes. He was sitting right in front of me, not even fucking watching the game. I shit you not. His only participation was to get mad when fans of the Cubs cheered. He would like look up and get fucking angry about that and then go back to fucking Zappos.com or wherever the fuck he was. And then at the end gets up and acts like the most fucking passionate fan in the world. It's like, fuck you. He threw like, a whole yes. beer at you. Like, he did he threw, throw the cup or did he toss the beer in your face? A full he threw a 22 tecate. ounce Tecate. So it's the imported beer, which means they t-shirt cannoned it from Mexico into Dodger stadium. So it's a dollar more, but yeah. Full beer, hit a baby. Can it was that like a three quarter full can of Tecate that fucking missed me and Adam and just hit a fucking baby. And oh, oh it was so good. Every ounce of it was beautiful and All so hard not to laugh. I bet in the moment. Liquor. Oh, well, I mean, the father tried grabbed me because he was like, What the fuck is wrong with you? I was like, Dude, that guy threw the fucking beer. We were just leaving here. Yeah. And then so he went and beat the shit out of that guy. And we were, I was like, Adam, we need to go. <laughs> I, I like grabbed Adam and like escorted him out. Cause I was like, we need to go now. LA is, I thought about writing a Substack article about this. And now that I've said that, I'm sure someone else out there will, but LA is absolutely the worst place to watch live sports. Hands down. I've seen live sports in a lot of places, both coasts, Midwest, yeah. all over LA fucking sucks for live sports and a big part of it is the fans are oh, LA sports fans are awful trash yeah they are trash I judge them by the years I worked at that sports bar and how none of them tipped none of them like and they not only didn't tip but they were so rude and so just like yeah they were dodging the tip <laughs> 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 anyway sorry if you're a dodgers fan but your people are trash and i'm a red sox fan for god's sakes and i'm like your people are bad yeah yeah i mean if you don't believe us go to a dodger game it doesn't go feel to, cool go it to a dodger game with the opposing team's colors on and see how it goes yeah yeah in boston they'll be like ah what are you a moron ah you're fine like, yeah you do like, that they're just like ah, we're gonna give you a heart nah just kidding i yeah, would say do kings a, fans don't count if you do that at a packers game they're going to be like, ah, you want a brat? You yeah. bastard. Kings In Denver, games. we talk shit, but we'll be. But I, I've been to Kings games with the oppose with the avalanche shirt on, not knowing anything about hockey. And the Kings fans are like, oh, so this is this and that and this. And da, 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 da. I'm like half of the Kings. Every Kings game is filled with non Kings fans. That's yeah. why. Like well, those I mean, are basically half the time. Those are like home games for. Well, I, I would the say there, and it's like just yellow. I mean, that's how the Charger game is, too. It's mostly whatever the Broncos. But, 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 but I'm saying I, I worked with 
Ki- Kings fans would come in and hockey fans were great. That's all I'm saying. Like I, I base that not just watching it live, but also like working at a big bar for a long time and watching the various fans roll through there. Kings fans were always, so I would exempt Kings fans is all I'm saying. No. Oh, okay. Adam and I are going to become Kings fans this year. Has oh hockey started? I, yeah. See, that's the thing. I was just the other day was like, oh yeah, fucking hockey's on now, huh? So much I hockey. love that I'm stealing Hulu with live sports because I get Bruins games pretty regularly and it is real delightful because I, I fell out of being because like the thing is, is if you have a home team and you're out here, you do become sort of divorced from knowing a lot about like you have to like really be able to like schedule yourself in a way that can pay attention to a lot of that stuff. Like even if you get to watch the games, you miss the community you know, like you got to find Denver Bronco friends. Yeah. Or you got to find Boston your Bruin fans. Yeah. The bar that like your one shitty team's fans decided that they were going to start going to. And it's the Broncos. We have two big blow up things that Bronco helmet and the blow up horse. But I don't know if they're called balloons. They're not balloons. They're balloons. What? What's happening? I'm just saying they have inflatable. Broncos. Inflatable. Yeah, inflatable Bronco stuff. And I love that bar. Oh. Ooh, nice Toby Keith song, buddy. What? So, yeah. Fuck oh, the Dodgers. That... Mm-hmm. Fuck give the that, Dodgers. Give that girl her fucking money. That's oh. wild. Bill it's Plasky so... wrote Ugh. an article about it. Basically, like, shame it. Because Bill Plasky, he's out here. Like, he's the L.A. He's LA like Times the sports LA writer. sports columnist. And he, has and he wrote a thing like, yeah. and I think the final two, um, the, the, the final two sentences were like, uh, Dodgers win Dodgers lose. And it was <laughs> really about how much they like betrayed. And so like, if you go to his like Twitter, you get these like LA Dodger stands that are just like, Oh yeah, real nice going after a successful team. And they're like, and it's man. <sighs> Yeah, LA. I hope everybody everybody there twists their ankle. Yeah. One of the comments, Oliver, someone broke into my car while I was at work and took a Dodgers bag I used to use as a lunch bag. Oh, really? It was filled with rotten cottage cheese when they opened it. Oh, but Jesus. All right. I think that's our episode, right? It sure is. I have to record again at six. So you should go to the bathroom. Thank you, everybody who watched the live stream uh what do we have to plug adam todd that's all i got kim what do you got uh at kim crawl and crawl space jeff has a big plug for all of us jeff what do you got well i don't know if you guys are in the la area dodger fans but mint on card is the second friday of every month at blast from the past on beautiful magnolia in burbank california which means in two days upon recording this friday april 12th i'll be joined by adam todd brown kim crawl along with some other amazing comedians like Stephen aj Kristen lundberg and our uh, mike lawrence and our very good friend Andy peters who you might know from several uh, episodes of of this these shows um but uh, we are saying goodbye to Andy Peters. We have a wonderful group of comedians on the show kicking fucking ass. Um, so definitely uh, check that out. You can also hear all the stuff at patreon.com slash Jeff May. Early access to shows like Nerd, Ugg Fine with Kim Crawls and exclusive there on both of our patrons. Can't resist. Uh, what? I know. <laughs> Nothing. What? Nothing. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I thought we were doing plugs. No, we, and he and I are like, I can crawl at Adam Todd Brown. And then you're like, <sighs> yeah, I was just wondering if you were going to like be able to stop it. Just plug in the show. Oh, yeah, that's all. That's the old, those are the only things I do. Thanks for watching. Keep, oh, keep, keep going. going. Keep, keep going. I'd rather not. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff and Tom. Bat so watch, watch Batman. There's they no like Batman. Shows. I've I've stopped doing shows. Dre with nerd Alvarez. No. Love Dre. Uh Jeff. He has cool people in his life. Jeff is a fuck fuck face. <laughs> Check that out. He's gonna I love that. I love the cunty energy of this episode. It's really great. <laughs> it is. It is fun. Adam but, yeah, tired, come, yes, it meant on card. Or we'll yeah. Fuck yeah. Come come get stuff. Come have us sign all your stuff. Yeah. 
your shirts, your foreheads, your babies. Bring, bring your fucking babies. bring your fucking beer soaked babies in so we yeah. can autograph that shit. Your, bring your baby so we can sign your baby. I'm only signing babies on Friday, so if you want something I'm signed, you better bring your baby. Stuff with babies. I'm signing babies' titties. What? Oh, Yikes! Whoa, that's weird. That's Is that what? That was horrifying. Well, yeah. Jeff's dating a girl named Baby. It's, she's actually in her fifties. She's just yeah. She's that dinosaur from the '80s movie Baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, now who's weird, Kim? Yeah. Jeez, jeez. Because I haven't seen an eight. What? Didn't know How did this were, turn maybe. around? We were we were on a team, Adam. I don't know. I don't know how this happened. I don't yeah. know. You guys yeah. are a team? Let me check that uh, our group chat real quick. <laughs> See how much of a team you guys are. What are you are, what are you checking? Because I didn't understand the make a wish on 9-11. What's going on? I was like, does he mean because it's 9-11? Is that a wish thing? And then I was, oh, I also was super high when you guys were sending all those. And I was in San Diego. I took an edible and I was like, I can't. I don't know what any of this means. It's 2024. Being high isn't an excuse for things anymore. Well, I just recently started getting high. Well, catch up. Come on. We've been doing this for years. Joe makes it a point. We'll We'll whip a fucking beer at you if you come to the show. Yeah. Yeah. We'll can. We'll fucking throw it like John Elray. And even better, it'll be like a Star Wars promotional can from the 70s because it's. <gasps> yeah. I would like you to throw that bu- that beer can at me. Vintage one stuff. of those, one of those Diet Pepsi's, uh, with Star Wars from like the re-releases yeah. or whatever. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Bye. We're done streaming. Goodbye, live streaming. Bye, everyone. Thanks for.